Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 5.6, the ratio and root test. So at this point, up to chap in chapter five, right, we've been uh, determining, we've been, I've been showing you guys more and more tests to determine either divergence or convergence of a series, right? Uh, some of these tests are in general for any general series. So there's the um, MCT, the monotone convergence test, the divergence test, right? And then there were certain uh, tests that uh, had specific uh, conditions that we needed to meet, right? So the integral test or the P-series, right? Um, this section is going to be no different. It's going to be two more tests to determine divergence or convergence, OK? Uh, and uh, thankfully, this is the last section that we're going to be messing with, at least in chapter five, for uh, series, OK? So we're going to summarize everything at the very end, OK? Um, I've got the QR code there for the uh, sequence calculator and the uh, series calculator. Um, we're going to be using it a fair amount here. Uh, I expect you guys to be using it as well, just to get you, you guys the um, sort of like that gut feeling of whether or not something is converging or diverging. Okay. So it's there. If you've got your cell phone out, uh, go ahead and scan it. Okay. So uh, the first of the tests for today, the ratio test. Okay. Uh, both of these tests are super easy to sort of uh, invoke, so super easy to, to use, okay? Uh, and they all, and they both sound exactly the same. So, uh, so for, a ra for the ratio test, right? Suppose you had an eighth of n, a series, right? And uh, all the eighths of n's are non-zero terms, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna compute this thing, rho, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus one divided by the n. OK, uh, if that row is somewhere between 0 and 1, then you know that that series converges absolutely. If it's anything bigger than 1 or if it's infinity, then you know that that series diverges. OK, and if that row is equal to 1, then the test doesn't provide any information. It's sort of inconclusive. That's what we say. OK, that's it. OK. Uh, the ratio test in particular, <clears throat> the ratio test in particular works really well with things that go to the nth power, right? Or things that have uh, uh, an n factorial in them somehow, okay? And I'll show you guys what I mean, why they're sort of that, why this test is useful for things that have those kinds of terms in them, okay? So I've got two examples here, OK? Uh, let me go ahead and do the first one. So let's say we want to de determine if this diverges or converges. If you want to put this into your, uh, your, uh, your sequence calculator or your series calculator, uh, you should get the hunch that it converges, right? So now I'm going to show you guys how this works, OK? So we need to compute, right? This is what we're going to need to compute, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n. We need to compute that thing, okay? That is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of three n plus one over n plus one factorial, factorial on the top, divided by three n divided by n factorial on the bottom, okay? I'm gonna rewrite this really quick and the limit n goes to infinity. So if you know how to do this, a fraction of fractions, right? This is equivalent to writing three n plus one over n plus one factorial, right? Uh, times three to the n on the bottom and then n factorial on the top. So we get to flip the bottom one and turn it into a multiplication, okay? Now, I want to look at this thing right here, OK? I'm going to group some things together, OK? Because I can. Because it's math. I can do that. Limit as n goes to, goes to infinity. So here's where I'm going to group stuff. 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n times n factorial divided by n plus 1. 
factorial. Let me write that nicer, yeah. N factorial divided by N plus one factorial. Okay, so now let's look at this first thing right here. This is three to the N plus one divided by three to the N, right? The difference between these two, right, is just the top has one more three than the bottom, right? So I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit. This is a little bit too much explanation, but I'd rather put it down so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, three times three N over three N. Okay, times. Now I'm gonna talk about this tail end, this. So if you guys remember, right, if I wanna do N factorial, right, that is equal to, N, uh, whoops, I get one times two times three times four times five times dot, 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 times N minus one times N. So n factorial is basically the multiplication of all the whole numbers from one up to that number. Okay, cool. Now, I want to look at both of these together, right? And I want you guys to see that the only difference, right, is that the bottom goes one farther. That is, uh, it does this. So n factorial gets to stay on top divided by n plus one factorial is n factorial times n plus one. Okay, now stuff starts to cancel, if you guys see it. So there's a three n here, there's a three n here. So there's only three left here, right? And then there's an n factorial and an n factorial. Those cancel, so you get left with the limit as n goes to infinity of three over n plus one. And this is equal to zero, right? So then therefore, the original sequence, the original series, this thing right here, uh, converges absolutely. So it's absolutely convergent. Got it? All right, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. All right, so let me do the next one now. The next one, I'm gonna do the exact same way. I wanna find out if it uh, diverges or converges, right? Uh, if, you, if you grab this and throw it into your calculator, again, you're gonna get that it's gonna be absolutely convergent. Okay, you're going to get that it is convergent somehow. Cool. So now, how does that appear using our ratio test? Here we go. So I need to do the limit as n goes to infinity, right, of the a n plus 1 divided by the a n, the absolute value of it, right? Okay. And there we go. Just had some technical difficulties there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the thing for this one, right? The limit as n goes to infinity of three n plus one over, keep track now, right? n plus one plus one to the n plus one on top divided by, 3n divided by n plus 1 to the n on the bottom. OK. So this all reduces down to, there's going to be a fair amount of math that's happening here that I'm sort of uh, expecting you guys to know how to do. Uh, three n plus one divided by n plus two to the n plus one 
times n plus 1 to the n divided by 3n. I'm going to do the same grouping that I did in our first one here, limit n goes to infinity, right, the infinity there, uh, 3 n plus 1 divided by 3 n times n plus 1 to the n divided by n plus 2 to the n plus 1. Okay, I'm going to do a reduction here in this one, right? Same reduction that was done in the one before, equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. This is going to be of 3 times uh, n plus 1 to the n divided by n plus 2 to the n plus 1. Okay, so now, <clears throat> hopefully you guys see, all of this hinges, this limit, all hinges on what the heck this thing does. Because the three doesn't do anything really special, right? It all hinges on this thing that I just highlighted in pink, right? The n plus one to the n divided by n plus two to the n plus one. Got it? Okay. This one requires a little bit of a funky uh, argument, right? Uh, and these kind of arguments you are more than welcome to do on your own now, okay? Uh, I'm going to compare it to a limit that I know the answer to, okay? This is less than. This is strictly less than. So watch this. Ready? This is strictly less than the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 n plus 1 to the n divided by n plus 1 to the n plus 1. So all I did is changed that. Now, there's a particular reason why I changed that in this case, right? So n plus 2, right, is bigger than n plus 1, correct? OK. And since I reduced it by 1, right, as I went this way. So as I went in this direction from here to here, right, I reduced my denominator by one, right? Therefore making that fraction bigger. So what I'm saying here is this, that, I'm doing it in purple here, that this term right here, is strictly less than this term right here. Since I made my denominator, uh, since I made my denominator smaller, I made the entire fraction bigger. Okay, run the argument through you for yourself. Okay, uh, it works out. Okay, but now the question is, why the heck did I do that? It is a means to an end. To be quite honest, let me try to erase some stuff here. At least I'm trying to erase some stuff. There we go. There we go. I have information of this limit at the end here. Okay. So notice what's going to happen now. This is going to be uh, equal to, right? There's an n plus one on the bottom, and there's an n on top right? Both of the bases are the same. So I get to cancel out a bunch of stuff. I get left with limit as n goes to infinity of 3 divided by n plus 1. And this equals 0. So then therefore, we have that our original series converges absolutely. Absolutes. absolutely converges, okay? Okay, there we are. <clears throat> so 
What comes up next here is a couple of quick checks. So again, try using uh, the, um, the ratio test for these, okay? There's one for uh, both odds and evens, and then there's one that I want everyone to try, okay? And you're gonna use the same argument on this one that I did in our, um, in the second example that I showed you. You're gonna have to finagle uh, the limit a little bit to show that something bigger, right? is less than one, right? Uh, and that gives you the result for the series that you need, in particular, this one. Okay? Cool. Root test. Root test is similar to the ratio test. Um, let me go ahead and state it first, right? Suppose that you had a series that looked like that. And again, you're going to do a limit, but the limit's now looking a little different. It's going to be the nth root of a to the n, right? If that limit is between 0 and 1, then you know that that series converges absolutely. If it's something bigger than 1, or if it's something, uh, if it goes to infinity, you know that the series diverges. And if it's equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. You can't determine anything, OK? So the Key thing here is that we need to compute this thing. We need to compute that, okay? So let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, this test in particular, so recall that when, I, when we were doing the ratio test above, right? The ratio test worked out really well for things that had factorials in it uh, and things that had uh, to the n power somewhere in there, correct? Okay. Uh, the root test is real useful for things where the whole entire term is to the nth power. Does that make sense? So the ratio test had portions of it that had to the nth power. The root test is real good if the entire thing is to the nth power. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. So uh, let me scroll down to these examples here. This one is a repeat from the root test, or to the, uh, this one's a repeat from my ratio test examples, right? Okay, so now let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. I can rewrite this as the sum, right, n equal one to infinity of three divided by n plus one to the nth power. And this is what I'm talking about, that I have the, the entire term is to an nth power, okay? So I need to compute that limit. So I'm going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root, the absolute value of a sub n, right? That is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root. Whoa, let me make that look nicer. Nth root of 3 divided by n plus 1 to the nth power, okay? And notice how nice this ends up working out. That cancels that. The nth root cancels the nth power. I get left with the limit as n goes to infinity, right? Of three divided by n plus one. And we know that this is equal to zero. So therefore, right, our sequence or our series is absolutely Convergent. We know that our series, the original one, is absolutely convergent by the root test. So it matches up to the sort of conclusion that we got from our previous section, from our previous example, right? So we're good. All is right with the world. Let's try a different one. So let's take this one right here. Okay. Notice how this one has the entire term is to the nth power, right? So Let's have at it. So then we need to do the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n, right? Limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of 2n divided by n plus 1 to the nth power. Notice how this works out real nice. The nth root and the n cancel out. You get left with the limit 
as n goes to infinity to n divided by n plus one. And hopefully you guys see that this is equal to two. Since this is equal to two, right? If this is equal to two, let me go up to the conditions here. Oops, there it is. We are in the second condition right here. The limit is greater than one. So then therefore this thing diverges. So then therefore diverges. Again, all of these tests, they give you if they converge or diverge. They, and if it does converge, it doesn't give you any information about the convergence. You still have to sort of go figure that out some, somewhere else, somehow, some other way, right? But at least it tells you that it converges. Okay. Again, uh, all of these tests, they are interchangeable. Some tests work better than others for certain types of series, right? Um, just watch that. Just keep that in, uh, uh, in mind, right? This one in particular works with things where the whole entire term is to the end, right? Though some of these do work perfectly well under a uh, ratio test as well, okay? Okay, another quick check. I want you guys to try this one out, okay? Um, there's an even, there's an odd. And then I have one for everybody. This one I think will require an integral test. Okay, just keep that in mind. All right, that rounds out our um, that rounds out our study of series, at least for now. The basic stuff we're gonna still use this stuff for chapter six, but we're done with all the tests in terms of convergence and divergence, right? So now comes the point where you know all these tests, right? And the question is, well, how, like, let's say you run across, you know, in the wild, you run across a random series, right? How do you determine whether or not you have a, a series that is convergent or divergent, right? So how do you figure that out, okay? Like I've been saying throughout this whole entire chapter, all of these tests are sort of interchangeable. Some work better than others, right? Some work for particular certain um, series better than others, right? Um, alas, it might be nice to have some form, of, uh, some form of strategy to figure out how to determine whether you have something that's convergent or divergent just upon looking at it, right? Uh, and Thankfully, in the book, they do provide a sort of a problem-solving strategy, and I sort of uh, copied copied it down, not entirely word for word. Um, there have been a little bit of a, a couple modifications here and there, okay? Um, but let me just go ahead and get to it, right? So suppose that you had a sequence or a series, right? N equal one to infinity of A sub n, okay? Um, all it comes down to really is looking at the series itself and seeing if you have something that looks familiar to something else. That's the entire sort of work, right? That's that's the entire thing, okay? So can you, can you determine that series to be familiar to something else, right? Is it the harmonic series? Is it the alternating series test? Is it a P series? Is it a geometric series? Is it a telescoping series? All of those, they're very easy to figure out. Alternating series, P-series, geometric series, telescoping series, those are super simple, right? Okay, so that's step one. Step two, if it's an alternating series, right? Are we interested in absolute convergence or just convergence, right? Uh, because we do have an alternating series test that gives us regular convergence and absolute convergence, right? Okay, step three. Does it look like it might look like a, a P series or a geometric series, right? If it does, it have components that look like a geometric series or components that make it look like a P series, right? If that's the case, maybe trying one of the comparison tests, either the direct uh, series comparison test or a limit comparison test, right? Okay. Four. Uh, does the series look like it has a, factor a factorial portion in it, or there's something that's in there that's to the nth power, right? Um, or if 
uh, or do you have something, or is a sub n entirely to some nth power, right? That's these last two tests that we were doing, try the ratio or the root test, right? So if you have factorials, right? Or there's a portion of your terms that is to the nth power, try the ratio test, right? Or if the entire thing, if your entire term is to the nth power, like the ones that we just did, right? Um, then try the root test, okay? And then now step five, at that point, right? If you take a look, right? Steps one, two, three, and four, we ran, we basically round down everything that we knew converged, right? And suppose we still didn't get an answer, right? From steps one, two, three, and four, then hell, maybe our series diverged, right? So then we turn our attention now to determine if there is a divergence in our series, right? So that's what step five is. So basically saying like, we're trying to prove convergence, right? Through steps one through four. Step five is like, oh, all our rules for convergence didn't work, so it must diverge. Let's try to prove that, okay? All right. So since this is the end of our study of just sort of basic series theory, right? Um, this, let me, Zoom out a little more. There we go. A little more. There we go. Um, this is a very good um, uh, problem solving strategy, just in case you run into any rando uh, uh, series like out in the wild, right? Just in case you need to determine whether or not something is divergent or convergent. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of additional things that you can do. Okay. Um, First thing I want to mention about this problem solving strategy, will it help you every time? Hell no. There's probably going to be a series that you're going to run across that you have absolutely no idea for, right? Uh, no matter what, I mean, this is supposed to be a problem solving strategy. It may not give you the answer every time, but it should give you at least some insight every time you use it toward a, you know, a random series that you see in the wild, okay? Uh, I would highly recommend now that we have uh, calculators, uh, like basically in our pockets, right? I put up the QR code again, that's the series and the sequence calculator. Um, you should always be able to grab a series and plug it into a calculator like the one that, I, that I'm giving you guys, right? Uh, to determine something, to get some sort of gut feeling for it, okay? Uh, and even if you know how to do all of these steps, tests, uh, even if you know how to do steps one through five, right? Uh, you need the experience, right? In order to basically, you know, look at a series and say, oh, that's probably the one that I need, right? Uh, and that's just, like I said, it takes experience, okay? Uh, as much as you can, right? Bit by bit, try to gain some insight through every one of the methods, through every one of the tests, through your calculators, through um, whatever, okay? And lastly, the last thing I kind of want to sort of impart on everybody here um, is uh, I, I don't refer to the textbook very often, but sometimes the textbook does have very, very, very good um, resources for you to use, okay? In particular, for this section, if you go to our textbook and go to page 517 to 519, I'm gonna, I have it actually open and I want to show you guys what that looks like. Let me bring that down, okay? It has all of the series material. So th this is page set 517. It has every single one of the tests and the conclusions that you can make and some comments uh, just in case you forget, right? Um, but it has every single one of the series that we just did for uh, chapter five, okay? If you need to print it out, uh, if you don't need to, don't print it out. Uh, I myself am going to uh, print this out and I'm going to put it in the additional resources page of our notes. Okay. And it's got everything. So you take a look here at the divergence test, comparison test, limit comparison test. Here's our integral test, alternating series test, root and ratio test. Right. Okay. So it's all here. If you need to refer to it, um, this would probably be pretty helpful. Uh, on the test. So 
uh, if you can print out these two pages, 517 to 519, three pages, sorry. Uh, print out these and just have them next to you uh, on your desk when you're gonna be taking the test for exam three. Okay, uh, that way you don't have to look through the book or look through your notes or look through my notes and try to find them. They're all sort of collectively all there. All right. All right. That rounds out our study of series. I think right after this is lecture questions. Okay. If you have any problems with these lecture questions, please stop by my office hours, uh, come to my uh, Friday hours, uh, or just simply drop me an email. Okay. Besides that, I think I'm done here. Happy studying.